evening, everyone. Call to order the caucus meeting of the Englewood Cliffs Mayor and Council. Now 6.30 p.m. on February 8, 2017. Madam Clerk, Mayor Roll Call. Mayor Cranjack. Here. Council Person Zaversa. <laughs> Park. O. McMorrow. Here. M. Park. Here. Wu. Here. Borough Attorney. Present. Superintendent DPW. Borough Engineer. Here. And Borough Clerk. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the open public meeting exact statement? Adequate notice of this meeting was given to the press and posted as required. Date and time of this meeting was legally given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. This notice is on file with the municipal clerk and posted on the bulletin board. Minutes of this meeting will be made available to the public upon the completion of typing and proofreading by the municipal clerk. Thank you. We have a motion to open the meeting up to the public for comments. So moved. Second. Okay. If there's anyone from the public who wishes to be heard, please come up to the microphone, state your name and address. And we are here to do the brief first. Absolutely. Good evening, everybody. Terry Miss on Sanford Drive. I understand that uh, we have on the agenda today the um, report from the borough engineer regarding uh, Whitty Field. I was wondering if it's possible to get a copy of the review uh, so that we may have some intelligent comments at the time of the meeting. Uh, the process that we are going to undertake is to uh, Discuss it in, I guess, in closed session. Is that right? No, 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 no. Out here? Okay. And then um, we'll have a special meeting just for that purpose. We don't have any extra copies. And I can share it with you. As long as you promise to share it with yourself. Huh? What? And I need a back. That's fine. You can take that. You're welcome. You can share it with yourself. No, no. At the end of this meeting, we're going to come up with a special meeting date. We're going to put this as a PDF on the borough website, and then everybody can view it. Okay. I am um, for the website. Yes. Mayor, uh, that's just a very fine Yes. I'm Mary O'Shea, 12 Irving Avenue. Not on. And um, on the way here tonight, I heard uh, the uh, Port Authority Police stopped two suicides on the bridge this morning, 15 minutes apart. One uh, 56-year-old man on the New York by the New York Tower, and 15 minutes later, uh, a woman on uh, the other side. And I remember one time you had sent a letter to somebody about supporting a suicide prevention fence on the bridge, and maybe uh, that was something that we could revisit. Okay. We'll reiterate that. Thank you. Uh, just send me a draft of that and I'll, I'll revise it a bit. Thank you. Uh, please let the record reflect that Councilwoman Hill has arrived. It's uh, 6 36. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Dave DiCavoyo, 165 Charlotte Place. Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone is having a nice evening, pre, uh, pre snow. Um, uh, it's a, it's a profit-minded uh, press, private industry, profit-minded press that likes to um, hype this uh, uh, news uh, to gain ratings and to then gain profits on the bottom line. That affects all of us. With all due so, respect to the press president. No, that it, I wish it were. Report tomorrow on the letter. And it's no offense, no offense against the press. I, I'm just looking for a not-for-profit press that would be devoted to, uh, as it is in Europe, uh, many places, um, Europeans, uh, specific, specifically in Germany, pay a tax on their television set. That is a generous support for the media. And the media is charged to enlighten and inform, and they're less dependent on how many papers they sell. They're less dependent on how much viewership they has that they have, and that gives more stability and job security to reporters, and affects the public in amazingly good ways. They have we have a much more uh, informed public as a result, uh, and it mean I absolutely mean no offense whatsoever against the press. 
at all. Um, so you're an NPR to PBS fan? I am not, because NPR <laughs> I would equate as very inferior compared to ZDF in uh, Germany and um, ARD in Germany. Those are two main public, uh, um, and over 51% of the public watches the public television uh, in in Germany, I can speak to that because I am also a citizen of uh, of, uh, of Germany. So, uh, moving on. Uh, you are what of Germany? I'm a citizen. I'm a uh, all, I have dual citizenship, okay. so I can speak to that. I I live there one month a year. Um, in addition, uh, my comment is uh, first of all, I'm concerned about the size of houses as compared to the size of property and maybe the borough engineer can speak to that if, if we have any ordinances that might limit uh, that uh, that size um, and a little bit of the history is how come how can uh, it used to be it seems the the size of the house in relation to the property was smaller and now it's much larger. Was any, did anything change? Yes, your uh, coordination is great. Could you have a question for the engineer who's here tonight? Is okay. If you, if you know the answer, I answer do. If you don't know, then we'll research it. With yeah, there's, there's some philosophy behind this. It goes back, if you look through the 70s and the 80s, in the, in the planning world, and I'm a planner also, in the planning world, people built houses basically for a metric income level. Mm -hmm. And as we got through the mid 90s and the early 2000s, income levels have gone up significantly and people are building houses to the size of income. Zoning regulations are what they are. There's a front yard, a side yard, another side yard, and a rear yard. And what happens is when your income allows you, you maximize the use of that global area. The only way towns can control that is to limit height or limit front, rear, and side yard setbacks. There's been towns that have tried to limit like volume of a house, mm -hmm. this doesn't, it's, it's almost impossible to do because people find ways around it. It becomes very controversial if this body would sit here and say, well, we want to have a front yard setback of 80 feet, and a rear yard setback of 60 feet, and the house wanted to be 20 feet wide, and the side yards, you want a 20 by 40 house, like back in the old days. People, you probably have people that line up outside complaining that they own the property, they should be able to build on it, and probably have a lot of variances. And as, as time has gone by through the 90s and 80s, the boards evaluate what kind of variances they get out for front, rear, side, height, and they kind of look at that every year and find out their regulations are meeting the current society. So this has been an ongoing debate. My whole career that I've done this. What is the uh, present Tanglewood Cuts coverage ratio? So it's varies from zone to zone. You really, yeah, every zone is different from your R15 to your whatever it may be. It, it, your, your regulations are okay. If you made it, if you change them and tighten them up, people are just going to build a bigger house inside the limits they can. That's your problem because they can afford to do it here. And, you know, when you go more west here, people build some more houses because that's where they live out west because they can't afford bigger houses. That's sure. really the problem. Okay. And this is about a lot of communities that respect this power right now. The, the second question, I have actually two questions, and I don't want to take up too much time here, but the um, the quality of the construction, number one, and the I, I would imagine also that a larger the house, you're going to have more runoff, uh, and the sewers are going to have to be built more adequately to accommodate all the extra water. Uh, do we find any... We, we actually, Angle Coast does a very good job. We no matter what you build, when you build an impervious area, if you increase it, you have to retain it on your site. So it doesn't impact our sewers at all. Oh, it does not. No, okay, so that's we, part we of the cover, We cover that here. This okay, good. Does, does a very good job of covering it. Oh, that's, that's very good. The, the main, one of the main concerns I have is the quality of construction, and I don't mind, mean to cite uh, European countries, but uh, the... Uh, and I will in this case, because it seems like the construction, the cement construction, uh, that you find in the European countries really kind of when you see a house go up in this town and especially what mainly concerns me is the use of wooden trusses and I think that con concerns the fire department also uh, if there's a living being in the uh, house the truss uh, will burn just as quickly and the house will collapse so to save that living being is uh, a, a much more of a danger. Does Englewood Cliffs have any special 
uh, codes where they need to use, um, where they are required to use um, steel beams uh, as opposed to wood trusses. I can, I can understand. So yeah. that, that's a very sticky issue, one because every town is governed by the building codes. The building codes come down through DCA and also come down to the federal government to your local DCA Department of Community Fresh from New Jersey, and they dictate it to you. Every town has to follow those codes, and the state set it up that way so your building department is removed from your politics in your town. So the building official actually reports to the DCA. He might, he, he or she may report to the mayor and council just for purposes of letting know what's going on. He takes his codes from the building codes, which are set by the state. So as far as we trust the state allows them, we can't prevent it. So there's no override in the no, local community. No override DCA. And the DCA is what? The Department of Community Affairs, which oversees the building codes that New Jersey adopts, which is we right now the international building code. Okay. They're talking about changing it next year. Okay. And they're talking about change, making improvements for fire and for sprinklers and things like that. Okay. That's the big change. All right. Well, thank a you. A lot because the edge works. Yes, of course. And that's a, I think should stand as a prime example. It is. Very and good. I think that the Firefighters Union has also come out against yeah. Uh, strongly against the wood trusses, and I think that there's something, you know, we, we should, as a community, support that. Um, I also, uh, Mary had, uh, O'Shea had mentioned something about the George Washington Bridge. I think that um, having lost a relative uh, to a suicide, that I would like to echo that once again. If anything, uh, this town can do anything uh, with the Port Authority to voice its concern. Um, to make that make that area less accessible for those that want to take their own lives, uh, that would be a good thing. So thank you very much, and um, thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to be heard? Yeah, it's the regular meeting. Okay. Uh, I don't see anyone else, so can I have a motion to come out of uh, the public portion? Yes. Okay, I have a motion to go into. <coughs> <coughs> I just want to okay. Welcome. Uh, so, can I have a motion to go into closed session, please? Aye. All in favor? And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Clerk, please read what you need to read for us to go into closed session. Okay. Resolution 1743, whereas NJSA 10-4-12 allows for a public body to go into closed session during the public meeting, and whereas the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Angola Flex has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain meetings which are accepted from the public. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Angola Flex will go into closed session for the following reasons that are outlined in NJSA 10-4-12. Personnel, Recreation Director, Personnel, Borough Administrator, and Litigation Tax Appeals. Thank you. They are good. I have, have a motion. <laughs> Can I have a motion to my closed session? Second. 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 Second.
Is there anything else on the caucus agenda that uh, we should discuss, or should we just wait till the uh, regular meeting? If I could just update the council, I know we talked about it briefly at our uh, at the budget meeting. So um, it's. I think Andy, at this point, you'll just wait till the regular meeting to, to go through. There's no sense to start and then have you stop and make it easier. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, under under new business, just something else that Andy is going to be touching on. Uh, Councilman Wu, the mayor, myself, uh, the chief of police, um, Lieutenant Hill, and Captain Regan did a walkthrough of the uh, police building a couple of weeks ago. Mark Neville. Oh, sorry. And Superintendent Mark Neville, yes. Um, and we that started because uh, they were looking at the police lockers and we needed to have some ideas on how um, it would be best served uh, from the engineer's standpoint to um, serve the police needs. So from that, and I'm going to let Andy address this. Maybe if you, should we leave that for regular also? Um, so, uh, leave that for there. Okay. He's going to be speaking about what he observed and what his ideas are on how it's going to be best to address some of the issues going on within the police department building. So that's why you see uh, under new business, police building, borough engineer. Okay. Um, the next thing, uh, since Andy's here tonight, is the um, assessment ordinance regarding uh, Fifth Street. And uh, I was going to ask the council if um, they if they would um, authorize Andy to uh, work on an assessment ordinance for Fifth Street. We, we, oh, sorry. Yes. We're not going to talk about it now, but we will be. Okay. Okay. And, uh, yeah, thank you, Gloria. Um, so um, we know that there's some uh, the, there's a situation on Fifth Street that needs to be addressed, and we'll talk about it later. Or the borough engineer will. We would have to authorize him to um, work on an assessment ordinance for Fifth Street. And um, the last thing that I just wanted to speak on was uh, during the budget process, we talked about the B3 zone and the need to. Um, have the planning board look at the B3 zone and um, and the master plan for the B3 zone. So we would have to uh, we would make a motion tonight um, authorizing the uh, planning board to look at the uh, B3 zone and the master plan regarding the B3 zone. We have to do that by motion, and uh, that's we talked about it at the budget, and that's why it's on the agenda. And that, that's what my update is. If anybody has any questions. So there's a B3. There's a B3 zone in town. Yeah, Andy, would you? That'd be a lot easier. <laughs> so, so Stigla, uh, the B3 zone it, it is an area of town which is a little bit tired. And in the B3 zone, a mayor and council can authorize your planning board to set up a committee utilizing the planner for the planning board to look at the zone and see if you could enact any changes in zoning, whether it be setbacks or heights or uses or multi-use or whatever it may be to try to invigorate or create that zone to give it a little more life. You have a number of buildings down there, either old, tired, or abandoned, and it, it gives that board, which is the board that has the expertise for it, and the planner, some leeway to look at it, make a recommendation back to this value. You can look at it and decide whether you want to send it back to them with other recommendations. You can look at it and adopt it. You can look at it and ask for an orange to be written. It kind of gives you some flexibility to make decisions once it's looked at by their committee. And that doesn't bind you to do anything. It just no. it starts have, the conversation. We have to give them the authorization to do no, it. You have to ask we put the money in the budget. You, it's your money. It's your money. Yeah, south, the south board of maybe. buildings is a lot of work to do. The consultant was ever paid for that? Remember I had said? That I know that was a I did. I asked Mark Neville, and he doesn't recall. And uh, I was going to send everyone email. I asked Janice, and she wanted to, first she asked me, was he paid a little large stuff? And I didn't know that answer. I don't. Two sums. Two sums? Okay, I'm going on. Right. So Mark had nothing on it, and Janice is researching it. 
So either way, we'll figure it out before that. Yeah. Thank you. It'd be great, absolutely. Have a credit. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't remember seeing any results. I, no, I didn't. But I do remember being in the line. Yeah, I remember that. Whether, whether we actually physically wrote the check or not. And not, yeah. Okay. So I think everything else will go for a regular meeting. Okay. And uh, okay, I'm looking to adjourn. So okay. Okay. Hi. We can leave the table here and share. The oh, because he's going to be still here. Yeah. 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 I'm okay here. Are you putting a, 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 a board out or anything? No, I, I haven't. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I,